I want to prove that the limit of the integral of from a to b, f raised to the power of n of x dx, quantity raised to the power of 1 over n, is equal to the maximum value of f of x on a b closed interval, denoted as capital M, as n approaches infinity. If, given that f of x is a continuous function on this interval a b, and f, a, f of x is non-negative, and then we're going to use this lemma, which is easily verifiable. Perhaps I'll prove it in a future video of mine. So, I'm going to prove by making two claims. So, first claim, limit supremum as n approaches infinity of a n. I'm going to prove that it is actually no larger than m. So this capital M is my maximum value. So claim number two. I'm going to claim limit infinitum as n approaches infinity of an is no less than capital M. I'll explain why. So, also keep in mind that we already know that limit in fine is always low, no larger than lim soup. So, claim number one, because, first of all, I'd like to know that if f of x can actually reach to a maximum value on interval a, b. So, we're given that because f of x is given, is known to be continuous everywhere on this interval. Therefore, also because it is a finite closed interval, therefore f of x should be uniformly continuous on this interval. Therefore f of x can actually reach a maximum value on some certain points, let's say x0. So at some certain points x0, f of x actually equals capital M, right, the maximum value. So, now I can replace f of x with capital M and loosen the inequality. So, like I said, I'm going to, uh, maybe let's say I'm going to denote, I'm going to denote the, uh, this quantity as a sub n. So, let's say I'm going to denote a sub n as integral from a to b f raised to power of n of x dx quantity to the power of 1 over n. So that's my, just like a sequence. So a sub n is now less than or equal to the integral from a to b. So replacing f of x with capital M. So now we have m to the power of n dx quantity raised to the power of 1 over n. Notice that capital M to the power n is already a constant, so we can just take it out of the integral. So that is equal to capital M to the power of n times integral, the integral from a to b dx, that is b minus a. Then we quantity 1 power of 1 over n. So further simplify that down to uh, <coughs> capital M times quantity b minus a to the power of 1 over n. Now, because, like I said, according to our lemma, uh, so for any constant a raised to the power of 1 over n, Limit is 1 as n approaches infinity. Therefore, this quantity should approach 1. Keep, keep this in mind. Now, even though we don't know the existence of the limit of a n, but at least we can take the limit supremum on both sides and still maintain the direction of the inequality. So, in other words, lim sup as n approaches infinity of 
an is no larger than m times one m. So lim soup is no larger than m. Lim soup is no larger than m. So our first claim is done. It's really true. Now moving on to our second claim. Right, I want to claim the limit in five is larger than m. So I'm going to try to work out something that involves the, the inequality of this direction, right? So I'm going to again use the continuity of the, of the function and say because it's continuous, therefore, for this particular x point, x0, if x is close enough to x0, then their corresponding y value should also be close enough. To put it in writing, that is to say, for any y, there is a delta. As long as the absolute value of x minus x0 is less than delta, then we can always have the absolute value of f of x minus f of x0, absolute value, is less than y, right? So, so, we can, if, so that means we can actually get rid of the absolute value and, and rearrange. So, so you know, f of x minus, let me just write it, f0 no, is less than y. This is after we get rid of absolute value, right? Less than y, larger than minus y. Now, I just need this half of the inequality. And uh, I'm going to explain why. So f of x is now larger than f of x0 minus y. I'm going to need this relation, right? So again, f of x0 is capital M. So that actually means f of x is larger than capital M minus y. Now, I'm going to put a restriction to delta. So let's say delta is less than half of b minus a. So b minus a is the length of my interval a, b, right? So that is less than half of the length of interval a, b. So I'm going to explain why I need this restriction. So now I'm going to write a n and see if we can shrink the inequality further. So if we can just write a n down here, then let's just say, now let's look at, I want to denote my open interval of x0 minus delta all the way up to x0 plus delta as j. Now, I, then I want to draw a graph a all the way up to b and here is x0, there is x0 minus delta, and here is x0 plus delta. Now, my purpose now is to make a n smaller, to make it smaller by reducing the boundaries, the length of the boundaries, right? The original length is b minus a, I want to, I want to make it smaller. So the reason I want to make my length of my interval smaller is because I can make the entire integral smaller because f of x is non-negative. If we don't have this condition, then it may not be always true. Since we have this condition, so it's safe. So I'm going to have a look at the intersection of, uh, let's say, j intersects with a b interval right since it's an intersection therefore 
after the, so the, this intersection should be contained within interval AB, right? So in other words, the length of my new interval should be shorter than the length of AB, right? So I can replace the boundaries AB by the boundaries of this new interval, right? That way I can make it smaller. So that is larger than or equal to right, make, making it smaller. So the integral over J intersects with AB, AB interval of F of F raised to N power X. Now, I'm going to actually replace replace the integrand f raised to n l of x by some smaller number that is by n minus epsilon, right? So that is even smaller, so n minus epsilon, a quantity to the power of n dx, quantity raised to the power of 1 over n. Now let's see if we can maybe First, take out the constant n minus epsilon to n, right? That's a constant equals n minus epsilon to the power of n times the integral j intersects with ab dx quantity to the power of 1 over n. Now, now, I want to further shorten, fur make it fur even smaller by shorten this already small interval. Right, I want to look at the length of my new interval, this intersection. Imagine if, if x0 sits somewhere here, right? So j, right, this open interval, that's my j, that's a, b, right, if they intersect, th their intersection should be just this part, right, this section, and this section, the length of this section should be already larger than delta, because the length of this section is 2 delta, right, this point minus that point, twice of delta, so delta is definitely shorter than the length of this intersection. If, if x0 sits at the edge, then this intersection should be just the right, the right half of j intersect with ab. That is the right half of j. But the length of the right half of j is exactly the length is exactly delta right so even in that case even in that case delta is no larger than the length of the intersection so all in all we can con conclude that the length that delta is always no larger than the length of this interval right so this integral is already 1 dx. So this integral is already simply the length of this interval. And by replacing the length of this interval with delta, because delta is always smaller, we've again made it smaller. Right? So this is a constant n, 1 over n cancel out, so n minus epsilon quantity, this is fine, and this is made smaller by replacing the length of the, this interval by just delta. Delta also distribute 1 over n to delta, right, to the power of 1 over n. Again, according to our this lemma, we know that this quantity actually approaches 1. Keep, keep this in mind, right? 
Likewise, we take the limit in Feynman on both sides. So limit in Feynman of a n as n approaches infinity of a n is larger than or equal to the uh, li li limit in Feynman of this is just limit of that. So m minus epsilon times one. So m minus epsilon. M minus epsilon. Now we're almost almost here, almost reached to this point, right? So if we just let epsilon approach zero, right? Then remember, notice that when I after I've taken I, I've taken the limit in this is already a constant. Right? Can it approach infinity? No. Why? Because I know that limit inf is bounded by lim soup. And I've proven that the lim soup is already bounded by m. So therefore lim inf is also bounded. So this is already a constant. And since this inequality maintains for a constant on the left hand side and the constant of capital M and the constant of epsilon, then if I let epsilon approach zero, this inequality should still maintain true. Still maintains, right? So in other words, in other words, lim inf is larger than or equal to m as epsilon approaches zero. In other words, I've proven this part, this claim, right? Okay, so no, notice that this is, uh, has nothing to do with cheating or anything. Because uh, you might ask, well, first of all, you've, let, you, you've assumed that epsilon is a, uh, some constant uh, some positive constant, right? So is delta. So that's why, because delta is a constant, therefore we can use that lemma, right? So this part approaches one, but how come, how come we let epsilon approach zero this time, right? Because, because originally, at first we uh, epsilon equal to we regard epsilon as a positive constant, then how come we can let epsilon approach it to zero? I say this is uh, totally legitimate, totally fine. Okay. And I'll be and I'll be using uh, this result for a future video or possibly uh, many many future videos, some future videos. Okay, so uh, since we've proven those two claims to be true, therefore I can simply say that uh, the limiting Feynman is larger than or equal to m, m is larger than or equal to limiting supreme, so therefore lim inf is larger than or equal to lim soup. At the same time, lim inf is also less than or equal to lim soup, therefore lim inf is equal to lim soup, therefore the limit exists. So uh, let's just check the limit if, if the limit equals m exactly so in other words now i know that uh, lim soup is equal to limit to the limit limit let's denote the limit as l so <clears throat> this becomes l that becomes l as well so l is now less than or equal to m and l is larger than or equal to m therefore the only possible explanation is that l equals m so that means our limit equals exactly m